then today I have a very heavy camera bag full of cameras and lenses that I don't use anymore and am sadly getting rid of. So this is kind of an updated what's in my camera bag, but like what's not in my camera bag anymore. First things first, all this gear would have been sold by the time I'm uploading this video, just so you know. The other thing that I wanted to say is that I'm not getting rid of this gear because it's bad or it sucks or it's not good anymore. Just like any photographer or any person in general, as time goes on, your style changes, your taste changes, what you need changes. So I basically moved on from all the stuff that's here in this camera bag and am invested in another ecosystem at the moment. I definitely see cameras and lenses as tools to be able to help me be creative and to take photos. Not really something that needs to be trendy, like you don't need to go out and get the latest camera or lens that was just released. These cameras in this bag have served me very well for my professional photography client work for very many, many years, and they could still do the job to this day and probably in the future as well. Just as I mentioned before, my style, my taste, my personal preference on what I feel comfortable shooting with has changed. And that's why I'm not using this stuff anymore. So yeah, I'll be letting you guys know some of my reasoning as to why I'm getting rid of some of this gear and also what I'm using to replace it as well. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I have in here are two Canon 5D Mark IV bodies. Like I said, these bodies have served me very well for my client work for a lot of years. I've shot so many weddings, fashion clients on these bodies. Now, as you guys may or may not know from what you've seen in my videos, I am part of the Sony ecosystem now and my main camera body is the Sony a7 III. So I will be getting rid of these two DSLRs as I won't be using them anymore and it's a shame for them to just collect dust. I want them with someone who will actually use them and give them some love. I don't know if you've heard, but there has also been a new R5, R6 announcement from Canon. I have been waiting for the longest time for Canon to release a mirrorless camera body with dual card slots. Because I shoot a lot of weddings and client work, dual card slots is a must for me personally. Since we have that technology available, I'm definitely gonna use it. So I think I might maybe get the R6 to replace one of my 5D Mark IV bodies just because I do really love mirrorless cameras and how compact they are and the IAF is super fun and makes life just so much easier to have as well. So yeah, that's a possibility. I might get one of those as like a second camera that I'll use for YouTube photo shoots here and there and for like personal photo shoots as well. But the Sony a7 III is definitely my full-time client camera body. And then the next thing, which might be a little bit weird, is I have the Canon 5D Mark III body as well. So this is the uh, second camera body that I used to use for shooting weddings. I first started shooting weddings on the Canon 5D Mark II. And then when the Mark III was announced that it has dual card slots, I went and bought two of them straight away so I could use those for weddings. And then eventually, as you guys can see, I upgraded to the Mark IVs and I decided to just keep one of my Mark III bodies as like a backup just in case. I would either keep it in my camera bag or in my car, depending on the wedding venue that we were shooting with, just in case I like, you know, fell in the ocean or a fountain and broke both my 5D Mark IV bodies. I still had like a spare uh, left over just in case. So I still have that and that I think I can definitely get rid of now as well. So those are basically all the camera bodies that I'm getting rid of. And what I'm left with are three Sony a7 III camera bodies. I use two cameras on me at all times with my hold fast straps that you guys would have seen in some of my behind the scene videos on YouTube. And then I have the third camera as a spare, again, just in case I fall into like a fountain or something on the day of a wedding, <laughs> which knock on wood, hopefully that never happens. I've gotten close though. Um, so now moving on to lenses, I wanna start on the widest end. So the first lens I'm getting rid of is my Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. I bought this lens to be able to capture big group shots at weddings and also take some like extra creative photos at weddings as well if I need a bit of a wider focal length than 35. This lens, however, for that very small job, like a big group shot, it's basically a one photo that you need, is quite big and quite heavy to be carrying around in your camera bag, um, especially on a wedding. You have like your bag on you for 10, 12 hours and a little bit of weight makes a really big 
difference at the end of the day. So now I actually have two lenses that are replacing that. I have the Samyang 18, this one, the Samyang 18 millimeter 2.8 lens. And I also have the Sony 28 millimeter F2 lens, which I have made a lot, a lot of videos about this lens on my channel. So I'll leave some of them linked down below if you guys want to check it out. Look how tiny these lenses are and they're super lightweight as well. I feel like having these takes up no space and adds barely any extra weight to my camera bag compared to this heavy 24 millimeter. Also the fact that they're f2 and 2.8 usually for a giant group shot of everyone there at a wedding. I'm usually shooting at 5.6 or above anyway so the f-stop doesn't really matter too much so I'm happy with these two. The next lens that will be finding a new home is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2. This is a beautiful lens that takes beautiful photos but for an f1.2 lens it's not the sharpest when you shoot photos with a wide open. I usually have to shoot at f2 or above to make sure I have good focus accuracy and to make sure that the photos are sharp on the eyes with this lens in particular. If you guys have watched my behind the scene videos, you would know that I love shooting my portraits wide open. I find that look of the eyes being tack sharp and then the focus kind of melting the skin away in a portrait looks so beautiful. So it's kind of a shame that I don't really get to do that this that often with this lens. So instead to replace this lens, I have the Zeiss 50mm 1.4, which Sony Australia let me borrow to make a video about it and to take some photos with it, which I'll leave that review video linked down below if you guys wanna watch. And after I used that lens on that day, I went and bought one like two days later because I fell in love with it. I love that lens so much. And I have done a few photo shoots since then on that lens and it hasn't disappointed me yet. The next lens I will be selling is the Canon 135mm f2. Similar to the 50, it's a good lens, but I find that it's not very sharp all the time. It's kind of a little bit of a hit and miss. This also plays kind of a small role in my life as well. I usually only use this lens during a wedding, but I find that the chromatic aberration, the focus issues, the color rendition sometimes as well, doesn't really inspire me to take this lens out for a portrait session, for example. So it doesn't, ha yeah, it doesn't have a lot of roles in my photography life. It's kind of like a one trick pony. So I will be getting rid of this. In order to replace it, I'm kind of in two minds about the lens that I want to get to replace this. I either want to go for the Tamron 70 to 180 2.8, which is a beautiful portrait lens, and I made a video about it, and I'll leave it linked down below if you guys want to watch, or the G Master 135mm 1.8 lens, which I also have a video about, and I'll leave it linked down below. On the one hand, I feel like the Tamron 70 to 180 would be great because you've got even extra reach than a 135. Plus it has a lot more variety in what you can use the lens for. I would use it for weddings and I would also use it for a portrait photo shoot as well because it's such a stunning lens for that reason. With this 135 F2, when I'm taking photos during the reception, which is typically a lower light situation, I do take photos wide open, so at F2. And even then, I do feel like I have to push the ISO a little bit higher than what I would like, especially with some particular venues that I shoot regularly at here in Sydney. So I don't know if the 2.8 would cut it for me in that scenario, which is a real shame because I love that lens so much. Then the other option is the G Master 135 1.8, which I think is the more likely solution for me. The 1.8 would be perfect because it's a step up from the F2 and would give me that extra bit of light. And it's also such a beautiful lens that I would feel inspired to shoot portraits with it as well. So it would get used a little bit more in my life too, which I think is like a good thing. So that leaves me with some odd bits and pieces that are left over that I will be keeping, which I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about as well. So two lenses that I'm gonna be keeping. Uh, these two very beautiful 35 millimeters from Canon. I have the 35 millimeter 1.4 Mark I and the Mark II version as well. I just don't think I can part ways with either of these lenses. This one, the Mark I, has something very special about it in the photos that it takes. And if I do get the R6 or get the chance to use the R6 in the future, I definitely want to use this lens on it to see what it looks like. I've also really, really used this lens a lot, so I don't think I could sell it even if I wanted to. We've got the, um, the focus 
band thing fell off from overuse and then the auto to manual focus little switch thing came flying off one day as well and was just like hanging off by a cable and now it's just taped on. So yeah, I think this one's just mine forever, which I'm fine with, I love this lens. And then the Mark II version as well is just like an improved, sharper version of the Mark I. This is still a very gorgeous lens and if I do ever have another Canon body down the line, I would wanna have this to be able to use it for my portrait sessions. So those two lenses are definite keeps for me forever. The last lens that I have is a more of a tentative keep. I might keep it, I might not, it just depends. It is the Canon 85mm 1.2 Mark II lens. Again, it's got something special about it, kind of like the 35 Mark I. I love the bokeh, I love the color rendition, I love the lens flare from this lens is <laughs> chef's kiss. So I feel like I might keep it depending on how much I use it in the future. Okay, I'm gonna take this off my lap because this is very heavy. So that is pretty much all the camera equipment, the bodies and the lenses that I will be getting rid of. Not because they suck, just because I don't use them anymore and I've moved on to using other lenses and cameras. So it's better if they find a new home and actually get used instead of just sitting here with me. If you guys wanna see an updated what's in my camera bag, like what's actually in my camera bag, please let me know down in the comments below. And I would also love to know in the comments what's in your camera bag. Have you ever had to make like a huge change from Canon to Sony or Fuji to Nikon or something like that? I would love to know all about it in the comments. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.